Hi, Rigsters here, now with a different game, Digital Combat Series, otherwise known as DCS. DCS is basically a realistic air combat game that primarily covers jet aircraft from 1960s or newer. They do have exceptions to that, as they also have jets from the 1950s and some World War II prop aircraft, but the main focus is modern air combat. In this video, I will be taking a rented module F-14 Tomcat that was made famous by the original Top Gun from the 1980s and show you how to do a more simplified cold start taught by the FF Squadron member Prop Wash, who was really good help on teaching how that works. So if you want to follow along, you just simply do the DCS standalone installation. It could be either beta or stable for this, and you could rent the F-14 module if you want to try it out. After you install the trial module or buy it, you click on Instant Action, which is right over here. Click on F-14, and then you click on Cold Start. All right. And then you will be greeted with a briefing window. You don't really have to pay attention to this for now. We're just doing a cold start walkthrough. So you just left click on fly. And since I'm not using a hold test joystick, just a mouse and a non hold test joystick and keyboard, some of these bindings will be different. Some of them are default bindings, some of them are not. And I will denote that as I continue. So with left alt C, which is a default binding, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out and move the mouse itself to look around inside the cockpit. Now you might be saying, great, but how do I get started? <laughs> so to get started, you press the backslash on the English keyboard, which is near the backspace. And you'll see a menu on the top right that says main. There's F5, which says ATC. What we want is F8, which is ground crew. And then once you press on ground crew, you see a whole list of buttons. Usually it's in white text, but for some reason it's darkened out. I don't know why. So what you need to look for is ground electric power. Press F2. And you'll see now a sub menu that says main, ground crew, ground crew electric power. You want to press F1 Chief, turn on the ground power. to have that on. Because the F-14 Tomcat does not have as much onboard self-sufficient power systems power that some of the other board. modules, or DLC as I call it, is supplied with. So now, the last thing we need to do before we start prepping the cockpit so press backslash again, F8, and now you see there is one last thing we need to do before we start clicking around is ground air supply. You want to press F5 in this menu, and you'll see main, ground crew, ground air supply. You want to press on F1 to connect. Connect ground air supply. Copy. Now, now, the reason why you want to connect the ground air supply is because this aircraft does not have enough airflow in the engines to start. That's basically the long story short. There's much more technical reasons than that, but I'm keeping it simple. Alright, so with the mouse still in camera view, this is a high fidelity model, which means you can click around with the mouse and click on all, and all the doodads and buttons. I jokingly call it high fiddly because you can fiddle with all sorts of buttons and do lots of realistic stuff in this game. <laughs> so now that we have that, we'll move the mouse towards the left side of the cockpit. And it's really difficult to see this, but we do need oxygen for higher altitudes. So if I zoom in with the mouse, You'll see this weird looking switch that says oxygen. If you hit left alt C on the English keyboard, 
is if you mouse over it correctly, it'll say oxygen switch on with this weird looking symbol as your mouse. Left click on that, and that turns on the oxygen. Then we hit left alt C to unhook that so it can move. The next thing you need is tack hand. Now, this is not a player name or anything. This is Tactical Aerial Combat Navigation System. What this basically does is allows you to set up waypoints and navigate around the map once you're more familiar with it. So if you press Left Alt C, you'll see that the mouse has now turned into what looks like a yellow uh, cross. This yellow cross indicates that you can click on buttons. Near the tack hand panel, which is right here, there is a switch that says off, R E C T R A A and B C. What you want to do just for this simple demonstration is just to right click two times. That moves the switch towards the center with each mouse click on the right side of the button. Now with that set there, we can do waypoints optionally, or if you ever want to bother with that. The next thing to do, to be slightly proper, is this panel right here that's Freak Channel. This is Frequency Radio Channel, and you can manipulate and do all sorts of stuff. Just for simplicity's sake for a cold start, you want to go towards the button that says Off, Main, Both, ADF. For now, we'll just right click two times to get to both. And now you'll see a one there, that means it is running. That's pretty much the most basic thing you can do, just to at least have it on. Next thing, if you move the camera up to here, you'll see a panel that says AFCS. So you might be wondering, like, well, what the hell is that for? Because I didn't know what that was for either. But PropWash, basically, long story short, explained that this is what helps the computer to stabilize the pitch, which is your up and down, roll, which is your left and right, and yaw, which is rudder, to help you stabilize the aerodynamic control surfaces for input, and also so you don't crash on takeoff and landing. It's basically a stabilizer computer system. You might be wondering, like, well, how do you turn them on? Very easy. You want each one on. So you want to press left click for pitch, left click for roll, and left click for yaw. So now those are on. Those are very critical to have on, by the way. You rarely, if ever, want that off, is the impression I was given when I was learning that. The next thing we need is to move up to here. On the right side of the panel is a climb dive indicator. You want to left click on this big knob when you have your mouse symbol like this. And now that is set. So now you can look at a glance if you're climbing or diving. We hit left alt C again and move towards the left side. You'll see a radar altitude and altitude symbol. You want to warm up the radar altimeter control knob by holding down the right mouse button. And you'll know you're doing it right is if your switch makes a noise and you're moving this all over the place. This is basically your warning you're going too low to the ground indicator symbol. You can put it anywhere you want. I usually put it at 200. You just let go of the right mouse button. And now we'll start warming up. To the right of it is a traditional altitude gauge. Uh, once that's warmed up, if you hold down right mouse button a little bit like that, it resets the flag so now it actually will function like the gauge should. So you know how high or low you are off the ground. Hit left alt C again. On the right side of the cockpit, the next easy thing to turn on is this displays panel. When you zoom in with the mouse wheel here, you want to turn on power, which is the VDI right here, the HUD, and HSD ECM. 
Then if you hit left alt C, look at that. On the center of your screen right here is the main HUD. This is the brown and radio subscreen. And your navigation and other radar subscreen. When I move the joystick back a little bit, you can see it better. That's how you turn those on. And over on the right here, the next thing you can do, but it's not needed just yet, but I do this ahead of time. I hit left alt C, air source for your oxygen. I set that to both, which is the default. So that way, once this is all set up and stuff, you can get oxygen for your pilot so he doesn't pass out at high altitude. Because that would be bad. So, the next thing you need to do is you need to use your Rio, which is your co pilot slash radar officer, in the back here. You might be wondering, like, well, how do I use him? Well, this is what he can help you with. You press the letter A, you get Jester. Apparently, all Rios in this game that are controlled by players are named Jester. Don't ask me why. It's the game reasons. Not every Rio is named Jester, just as a forewarning here. You'll see these bunch of menus here, and you might be going, oh, well can't I just click on it with the mouse? Nope, that's not how it works. At least not by default. What you want to do is you use the left control by default, and you do left control 3, and that will start the startup process for your main entrance. ICS comm check. Can you hear me? And he'll say comms check. So you might be saying, well, how do I confirm that? You press A again. And now you see these menus change slightly. It'll say loud and clear. So you hit left control 4. Okay. And then he'll continue typing on his typewriter and pressing buttons and switches back there. If you listen closely, it sounds like he's typing on a 1940s typewriter. But that's actually the buttons he's manipulating. Arm the ejection seat. And he says, arm the ejection seat. I deliberately didn't tell you to do that because I actually did that mistake too. So if you press escape here, you'll see a menu. In this menu, if you go to adjust controls, you go, oh god, sweet lord Jesus, that's a lot of buttons. Well, don't worry. There's a search function. Under here, but click on search, you type the word eject. Don't worry, I'm not going to troll you with this. <laughs> Although I was trolled with this once, but not with prop wash. You want to do toggle arm ejection seat. The default keyboard binding is left shift E. You press that once. D don't press it more than once because you could risk inadvertently having the real guy go flying in the air. I've done that before. You can also change this binding to a joystick or other throttle switch as well. It's recommended you set this to some kind of button because it's very hard to find in the cockpit. And you click on OK when you're satisfied with that. And you hit left shift E. I'm once. closing the canopy. And then if you do that correctly, you'll close the canopy. For you. Ready to start. And when he says that, we can move on to the next step, which will be on the left side of the panel. There are these two white looking sticks. Those are your throttles. If you hit left alt C to unlock your mouse, you'll see an L and an R. And if you mouse over it correctly, it will say engine crank. Now it doesn't matter which engine you crank first, but I'm going to start with the left one because it's easier to understand at first. Just left click this once. Now you start the cranking. The next thing you need to do, so you move your mouse over, you see these two big white stick looking things, which is your throttle. Left click on the one that's away from the throttle stick that says ICS EXT UHF once. This tells the engine management system on the F-14 to start priming the turbines to get started. You might be going, well, how do I tell if it's working? Hit left off to see. You go over to this gauge right here near your panel near the altitude. This says RPM and EGT. EGT is your exhaust gas. RPM is the engine revs. 
And you'll see to the left of that is some more gauges of engine related oil pressure, air pressure, and hydraulics. That's what that means. And if it's done correctly, the switch will reset itself to the center. And we go in great. Well, how do you start the right engine? Same process, but different button. You mouse over to here. And you right click on this once. And then over here, this big stick that says all those findings. Just left click on it once. And now it'll start priming. And if you quickly look over here, when you go to left alt C to have the mouse free to look, zoom in here, and you'll see now the right engine is firing up. Okay, great. So what do you do next? Well, the next thing you need to do is to test the wing sweep, which you're wondering, like, well, why would you test a wing sweep? Because this aircraft is one of the few operational, at the time, jet fighters that varied their wing sweep by hydraulics to change their wing shape. It also looks pretty badass, in my opinion. So, you see this yellow lever? This is your wing sweep override slash uh, adjuster. What you want to do is left-click drag this sweeper, move it all the way up. And then if you quickly look around behind you, you can visually check to see that the wing sweep is going forward. And you might be wondering like, well, how do I check the sweep on the gauge? That'll be right top right here. If you zoom in a little bit, you'll see it says sweep. And it says E-M-E-R. That's not a rock band or something. <laughs> that says emergency. So, you might be going, great, well, I want it to be able to sweep automatically so I don't have to manually fiddle with it. Well, don't worry, we'll get right to that. So, we go back to this panel where the throttles are. You see this yellow handle, it now looks like you can click on it to pop out. What you want to do is you right click on this, and it'll start sweeping backwards by itself. And you want to close this plastic little handle so you don't accidentally click on it when you're fiddling with buttons. Just like that. Now, the next thing you want to do is reset the master caution. Because if you don't, it won't sweep automatically and it probably won't work for you. And you kind of need those wings to move up and down. <laughs> so how do you do that? Well, on the middle left corner, Right down here, if you left alt C so your mouse can unlock, it says master reset. Left click and press it in for approximately two seconds. Let go. And now, the master reset has been switched. The next thing you need to do, and this is a custom binding I use, you need to set the sweep to auto sweep. So, for me, when I press escape, Adjust controls, click on search, and go to sweep. You'll see wing sweep auto mode. You can set this to whatever button on the keyboard, mouse, joystick. You want to have it kind of convenient to access. For my case, it would be left control R. And I click on OK. Tap that once. And now we'll be in functional automatic mode. So that's how you get the wings to sweep automatically after testing them to make sure the hydraulics actually work. It's very important. So now that we've got all that situated, next thing we need to do is tell the ground crew to get rid of their supply of electric power and air. So we hit the backslash key near the tab and enter space. Press F8, F2 for ground, electric ground power, press F2, and then do the same thing, press slash, F8, press F5, and you want to disconnect the ground crew air supply. Chief, disconnect ground air supply. There we go. The reason why you want to do that is so 
they uh, don't yell at you for moving and you're not stuck. The last two things you want to do for taxiing is removing the park and brake which is right over here on this panel next to the landing gear which is this big white stick you want to move this stick you just left click that and now the park and brake is disengaged so that light goes away and last thing so you can taxi better is you press escape here adjust controls search type in wheel and you'll see for the F14 is autopilot reference slash nose wheel steering toggle. You'll see that its default key binding is the letter N. You can change this to whatever you want. I'm just going to use the default for this. Press OK. And now, if you zoom in on the top left corner of the panel, you'll see NWS Inga. Because it can't fit the word engage for some reason. Don't ask me why. They should have made the button a little bit bigger. <laughs> but the reason why you want that on is so you can turn better. And with that, all you have to do is just throttle up gently. And if you did everything correctly, you'll start moving out. Just like this. So, that's pretty much it. You got your Tomcat now ready to taxi and do pretty much whatever you want to do in this game. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support the channel, I do run a Ko-Fi page with the goal of getting a better flight stick so I can fly the game better. Because <laughs> the joystick I'm having is kind of janky. It kind of works but doesn't. And I hope you learned something new. I was really grateful for FF community member PropWash for teaching me a very basic and much easier to understand thought and control process to get the F-14 on a basic setup from a dead start. So that should help you get up and rolling for aerial or ground attacks in the F-14 Tomcat. This is Rickster's Journey, signing off. <laughs>